Good morning and welcome to another Tuesday tour. It's John Sauter along with Michael Fairchild behind the camera from your Purdue Alumni Association coming to you this morning for Freshman Move-In. Freshman Move-In and we're going to talk a little bit more about the Protect Purdue plan that's in place. So you find us in the North Stadium parking lot. The stadium is behind me and this is kind of the first point of check-in for, for move-in. Perhaps one of the most unique check-ins, uh, perhaps in the history of the university, with all the uh, coronavirus uh, protocols in place, uh, it's taken quite an effort. But to talk a little bit about that, I just want to mention that it's, uh, we've had strong leadership from President Mitch Daniels. He had an early and aggressive stance that we would do everything possible to open up for an in-person experience for our students. And in fact, that early approach gathered a lot of attention in higher education. He was featured on several TV news stations and interviews. He actually did a, a, a guest column for the Washington Post where he talked about its higher education's duty to do what they can to try to make this happen. And I can tell you those, that approach has resulted in some very positive numbers. In fact, the freshman class this year at Purdue is over 8,900, the most Purdue freshman ever for a freshman class. And that accumulates to 44,500 total enrollment at the university. Again, a high water mark for the university. Of the 44,000, 34,000 are undergraduates. And of those, 88% have opted for the in-person experience, a high percent by comparison. And so uh, those students who are choosing to arrive, new students today, here they are. Uh, new students have been asked to arrive uh, spread out over a five-day period of time. Instead of two days, it's five days. They're coming early for Boiler Gold Rush, our new student orientation experience. And so let me talk a little bit now about the check-in uh, procedure. So we have two tents here. Um, the, the first one is here. And in this tent, first thing that happens is we have an EMT who's going to take the temperature and the, of every person in the car just to make sure they comply. And then the critical question they ask them is they want to see the certificate that they have tested negative for the virus. Every student, every returning student, all 44,000, have to, have to take a saliva test that has to test negative and then they get a certificate that they have to show to the EMT. And most have, but I can tell you a few moments of trauma they've been telling me are for the students who forgot, they misplaced it. They told me of one case yesterday morning of a family from California who just could not find their certificate, but the resolution was they went across town, uh, paid a pretty price, but got instant results, came back, and were allowed to proceed. So this is kind of step one of the check-in process. Step two is right behind us, and we'll see you there. Okay, we are in the second tent, the second point of check-in. They've had their temperature, shown their certificate. Now they're going to come around. In this tent, they're actually given their university ID card. All the cards are here. They weren't available to come here during STAR, during the pre-registration this summer. So the ID cards had to be uh, made over the summer and given to them at this particular point. University ID card, and then also they get their room key here. So rather than going to a hall and getting their key in a congested area, the room keys are given here. There are actually three of these different locations around campus. And so the check-in is really spread out. It's really quite orderly. There's really no lines to speak of. So it's really going quite well as they now equip them with the ID card and the room key. The next step then would be for them to proceed to the residence hall and actually start to move in. And so that's the next step and that's where we're going to see you over on campus. Oh, well, we've relocated now and we're between Shreve and Earhart Halls. We're at the back dock of Shreve Hall and you can see the next step in the move in procedure. And that is they arrive and start unloading the car. And so the Boiler Gold Rush folks are the folks in the gold shirts who are helping out. Um, they actually uh, assist in disinfecting the carts, making the carts available, and then the family members actually uh, unload the car, 
put it on the on the cart and then the uh, student and only two family members are allowed to take things up to the room and so none of the other family members unfortunately can be here and the things that students are bringing is a little less maybe than usual uh, as they uh, arrive and go through the whole move-in procedure um, they're arriving to be here a part of boiler gold rush boiler gold rush again is a new student orientation program actually started in 1993 to get all students oriented they come back days early and so uh, over this five-day period new students are moving in they have four or five days then of activity they all learn the words to hail Purdue and a variety of things all sessions this year are virtual uh, but the good news is that the students are in touch with the team leader this is like an upper-class student who's in touch with his 10 or 15 students on a regular basis as well as the students get to meet 10 or 15 other students and so there's a connection made with Purdue from the get-go and uh, during this time that's very very helpful in fact it reminds me of move-in you may recall your move-in and it used to be you came with a trunk or a suitcase these days they come with trailers vans horse trailers u-hauls all those sorts of things trying to make it as comfortable as possible but it helps to be able to drive your belongings right up right up to the residence hall itself um, and in terms of the move-in experience and dropping the students off i can tell you that part hasn't changed i have been through many many of these check-ins and i can tell you that dropping the students off and leaving to go home and the anxiety felt by the parents and the students uh, that is real and uh, if i could put a plug in it would be that uh, during this covid experience that only adds to that uh, that leaving behavior that that anxiety caused and so if you are in a position to maybe provide a word of kindness to parents or students or maybe that student that worked for you this summer or played on your ball ball team um, or that you've seen grow up in high school or the parents or the next door neighbor somebody who won a scholarship in your club if you could provide a, provide a word of kindness and comfort to those folks saying it'll all be okay and it will uh, probably now is the time to do that because there's a lot of a lot of anxiety going through that part really hasn't changed very much at all and so uh, we're all boilermakers we're all going to get through this together but it's just going to take a concerted effort so i hope this gives you a flavor for all the things that are coming in here um, there's one other thing i want to show you as we talk about what's new this fall i will meet you there okay as michael and i make our way to our next location i happen to pass by a group of students and these are actually TLs, or team leaders, Boiler Gold Rush team leaders. I mentioned these are the folks that are critical to meeting with the students and getting 10 or 15 students to know each other. This is kind of what meetings look like these days. Out in the lawn in the shade of a building, social distance, as they kind of uh, put together their thoughts as to what they're going to be doing this day and the next few days uh, for the students to get them acclimated to campus. So uh, we wanted to give you a glimpse of what it really looks like these days. We'll see you in a second. Okay, we are now at our new location and a few things we wanted to show you, but first logistically, we're between uh, First Street Towers and Harrison Hall, actually on MacArthur Drive. And they've actually closed the street and put up a tent like this. Lots of these tents are around campus. These are the tents where our students will now be taking their meals. So they actually go through our dining courts and it's all carry out, all disposable paper pick up their items, then they actually can come and sit at these cubicles, plexiglass cubicles, and this is where they'll be able to sit and have their meals. In fact, if they want to sit here and meet, if they want to have uh, study sessions here, uh, they'll be taking place uh, in these tents uh, during that period of time. So uh, a lot of time and attention has gone into these. Several have moved their locations to trying to get the best location for the student. Um, I know you're wondering what happens when it starts to snow and it gets cold. I think they're hoping we have better news by then, but uh, uh, we'll wait to see what the answer is to that also. But again, part of the Protect Purdue plan, the thoughtful thinking that has gone in to do the very best we can to kind of protect our students and all those involved with the, uh, with the educational process here. In fact, we're going to talk more about Protect Purdue uh, in our next little segment. We'll see you there.
Okay, we're on our final expert of today's show. And for this uh, segment, I want to highlight the Protect Purdue plan. You see a nice visual, a nice graphic behind me. Huge graphic. In fact, there's almost a dozen of these around campus that I think Michael's going to be able to show you as, uh, as I'm talking. Uh, quite impressive, providing you reminders of all the things we're supposed to be doing. And don't we know, we all need to be reminded about wearing the mask, social distancing, washing hands, all the proper things. And so considerable effort has been put into this uh, effort, into this movement. And it really started last spring with the Safe Campus group that got together to figure out how to close out the semester and go to virtual classes, how to deal with the virtual commencement, canceling all sports, all events, all that sort of thing, which led to a summer with basically the campus shut down. Um, and the group continued to meet on a regular basis and in housing, going through all sorts of things of de-densifying housing and the tents that we just came from, de-densifying a lot of the classrooms. How are they gonna do all this to assure our students, as I mentioned, 88% of the undergrads, they feel comfortable as they should be because of the amount of plan planning effort that has gone in to all the aspects of getting the campus uh, up and running. To include this, which is a kit. This is a kit that all students will be receiving. In fact, it's on their desk in their residence hall room right now. In fact, all faculty and staff and students, researchers, graduate students, wherever they might, are gonna be receiving one of these kits also. And so again, part of the comprehensive effort being made. So let me just show you a little bit about what's in it. First of all, there, uh, there's a safe shield, face shield, that's gonna be available. I'll just put it down here. But then within the kit itself, again, are reminders about get your game face on, a Purdue, Protect Purdue pledge, where it reminds the students what to do uh, on a continual basis, as we have been all summer. I can tell you there's videos about every week. There are conversations with the provost about every other week and uh, all sorts of pep talks from the president. There have been sur surveys of faculty and staff as to what we could be doing better, extensive efforts. Also in the kit are masks. Each student, each person is gonna be receiving two Purdue University face masks for them to wear. There's gonna be uh, hand wipes, safety hand wipes for, for all the students. There's gonna be a kind of a product related to Tylenol, kind of in case you feel a fever coming on, something you can take for it. Um, there's actually a thermometer, a thermometer that you can take your temperature on a regular basis, just to double check. You know, and even a small bottle of Purdue Pete, repeat, hand sanitizer. I mean, the extensive efforts being taken for all of us is just, I just think, continues to be, you know, quite impressive. Let me put this down because I want to close out by reading some quotes from uh, our president, Mitch Daniels. And he said, no one can say with confidence that we can make it to Thanksgiving. If we don't try, the damage is certain, including the damage to the community. Is it the right decision? Yes. Can we do it? We don't know. This is an issue everywhere for every school trying to do the same very thing. There might be a place that's done more than we have. We just don't know who it is. So it gives in all of us all the confidence that I think we need at this particular time to make this thing work, get us through to Thanksgiving, but it's gonna take us all working together. So if you can help out in your small way, we'd really appreciate it. And so be careful out there. Hail Purdue.